Hello, dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars. And I have some thoughts on timelines and uh, like that for you right now. I've been watching a movie um, called Dimensions. And you can hear it on, watch it on Amazon Prime. And I'm very interested in people's notions about timelines and time travel because that's my field as well, one of them. And the thing that I find about timeline movies <clears throat> is that they, they're on the right track, yes, but they're missing important details about working with timelines, according to the, the Hathors, the Hathors of Venus. The Hathors are a very advanced um, star civilization. They're star brothers and sisters of ours, but they, were, uh, they arose, they ascended, they awoke, far, far bef long time before us. And so we can learn a lot from them. And one of the things we can learn are timeline skills and dimensional, uh, multi-dimensional skills. And they're here to teach us, I'm here to say. So, so anyway, there's that. And let's back, go back to the movie right now, the movie Dimensions. Dimensions is a very interesting movie because it's it uh, occurs from a more enlightened point of view, a more aw awake point of view. And I haven't finished the movie yet, but I thought I'd better mention this right now uh, before I forget it. Uh, the thing about this particular movie is, so far, from what I've seen of it so far, is that it treats... Um, uh, yeah, it came to a point where they were talking about really soul wounding an event that occurred in somebody's childhood, three people's childhood, where a young girl uh, purportedly died uh, by, by falling, slipping and falling in a well, I guess, or getting stuck in a well. And, um, and then one of the other two children who were boys tried, and it, it tried really hard to find a way to time travel back and fix things. And, uh, and the other boy was his assistant as he grew up. So they were both trying to change that timeline. All right. And, and this is a frequent theme of the time travel movies as you're trying to go back in time and change things. But time, changing things in timelines is not really a question of changing one timeline. One timeline uh, is one possibility, okay? And if you experience a soul wounding in one timeline, then, then the way to transform it is to move to another timeline where that didn't happen, and in that way, through the power of your awareness and love, you merge the, the soul wounding timeline with the timeline that has no such soul wounding in it. So it's not a question of going back to a time before the soul wounding occurred. It's not a time loop, loop issue so much. It could be that, but that's only one possibility. And as, they, as the movies all say, that's a less likely possibility because you don't know what action in the past you took that caused that event to occur, that soul wounding event to occur, but your, your sentient team will know that, okay? So if you use their skills, their understanding, and their knowledge of the user manual for this human form with all of its subtle bodies and all of its possibilities, they can pick the timeline for you in which that uh, event or any ramification or variation of that event will not occur, uh, have occurred. They'll pick that for you. The most efficient way to change the past is to move to a timeline, a parallel movement, rather than a looping movement. Move to an uh, alternate timeline with your awareness, just as a photon skips from, from one place disappears from one one reality, one timeline or one dimension, and reappears a moment later. Where did it go? It went to a different timeline or dimension. A photon is pure awareness. You are pure awareness. You can do that too, but you need to call upon the greatness that you are and the greatness that assists you. 
So that's the first thing. Now the second thing has to do with um, the poor part of the video, the part of the movie that I'm watching right now, and that is where uh, the young man, that's the scientist that wanted to change the past and works with timeline theory, decides to physically go down into to the well, climb down the ladder into the well where the young girl passed on and she was like the love of his young childhood. And uh, so he climbs down there and then he comes out and then he goes into uh, what might be d described as a catatonic state. Now my understanding of a catatonic state has to do with um, dark, dark night of the soul theory, transformational theory experiential transformation and awareness transformation. So I think of catatonia as an attempt to withdraw from um, uh, to withdraw from physical stimulation all of the senses by, by balling up in a ball right and, and not responding to like the nudge from the mom or like that. Just just going deeply within for a chance to to change completely to change the well tang shang, to change the w world outlook, to to revise the user manual, you know, <laughs> like that. But in this movie, uh, the young man is just lying on a bed, just de in a in a very like withdrawn state. He's just he's just questioning everything. Which a less dark night of the soul is going on, right? And he he's talking about. Um, the teacher that he had, the teacher for Timeline, he says, um, if you imagine a time when something really horrible happened to you, uh, and, and that influenced all the rest of your life, and the whole life after that was just, just torqued around by this terrible experience that you had, such as the young man had in his childhood, right? And then the professor says, and now imagine that what you're experiencing right now is that. You see? So, so, and in fact, that's true. That's true that this dimensional awareness that we're having right now, uh, with all of its, like, distortion of the light, density of understanding, and the falling away of the truth of of reality that has to be experienced in order to be in this third dimension is the, the, the forgetfulness of the gray trauma of being aware in this dimension. And so, actually he's talking about dimensional awareness here. So, so in order to heal that, soul wounding, we need to move into the timeline and dimension that doesn't have it. Again, the solution is, this, is pretty much the same. You add the dimension, and we become this much greater being, this greatly ex big as a church, you know, big as a national park, that big, big as planet Earth, bigger than this solar system. We become large as the universe, large as the multiverse, and beyond that, the matter from which came the matter, you know, the, the ground of being. We are that, you see, and from that we look down into, deep, deep down, telescoping down into the child with the soul wounding who has the timeline. And in that way we hold what we're seeing here on earth. In that way, we can change it in any instant to any other timeline or any other dimension from that place, that ground of being, that, that darkness from which matter arises. All right, that's it for this movie right now. It's a, an extremely interesting movie. It's called Dimensions. It was a movie that was put out in 2011. It's starring Henry Lloyd Hughes, Kamala Rutherford, and Patrick Godfrey. All right, take care. Talk to you later.